chapter 18, from verse 16 to 21. Shall we read? That's all. That's all. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Um, it is my prayer that God's word enter your mind this morning and um, do what only He can do in your life in Jesus' name. So we'll be dealing, dealing and talking about a topic called the crossroad. The crossroad. And uh, at this point in verse 21, 21 is our main text for today. He said, And Elijah came unto all the people and I said, How long had he between two opinions? How long? If the Lord be God, follow him. If Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Uh, I like to read another version. Uh, the NLT says, Then Elijah stood in front of them and said, How much longer will you waver, hobbling between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. And the people were completely silent. Now, the, the worst thing you can do to yourself is to say you want to be in the middle. You want to be on the fence. You don't want to decide on one thing or the other. It's not, it's not going to work. Nobody can be on the fence. Even God said that if you are neither hot nor cold, I will spill you out. Praise the Lord. Which means that at the crossroad, you need to make a decision. At the crossroad of every junction of life, you need what? To make a decision. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I had a discussion with some of my friends many years back. Uh, when we saw that the, the, the rent, rent was going so high, and uh, we stay in Sulu then. And uh, I had a friend then was he had a job with um, HP. It was I mean well high paid job, good job. And uh, he got an apartment in uh, Igondo. Who knows Igondo here? Yeah. Uh -huh. He walks on the highland. He got an apartment in uh, Igondo. It was it was like a mansion. A five-bedroom duplex on a on a four plot with so many got so many things to I me mean, and and he bragged to me. I was staying in two-bedroom flat then. He bragged to me. He said, "Come, I'm staying in the mansion. Come and see. You stay here." Okay. So I didn't, I didn't say anything. After a couple of years, then, I mean, the, the, what he was paying for the, for the duplex then was almost, was slightly higher than what I was paying for two bedroom. 
So he gave me so many reasons to see his own reasons. But I didn't say anything. I said, you know, you know, we're just there. So five years down the road, he had moved out of the house. And I asked him, what happened? You moved out of your house. And he said, I don't get enough sleep. I wake up 3 a.m. every day just to meet up with work on the island. I leave my house by 4. And the traffic, I'll get to work by 6. Before I could take a little nap, the time to walk aside. And going home in the evening, I get home around 11. Please, how much time does he used to sleep? Like four hours or so, have you? Me, I stay in the two bedroom. I wake up seven. <laughs> because it only takes me 30 minutes to walk. And I resume 8.30. So I had enough time to freshen up. So at the end of five years, this man is looking like, a, like my uncle. And I'm looking fresh, refreshed. We, the two of us were a function of our decision. He feels that living close, I mean, in the city is much more expensive. But there are other things that are taking the expense from him. I paid that amount, not because it's easy, but is convenient for me. And I believe strongly, because part of the things that I told him then, that I believe strongly that this would help me to work more, to even earn more. I can be more productive if I have enough time to rest and think. So basically, in life, we are functions of our decision. Every time in life, life produces a crossroad for you. Now, whatever you decide on that crossroad, the time is how you find yourself today. It determines what happened to you today. People will look at you and think sometimes it is not everything that happens to man that is bewitched. We are the witch ourselves. Sometimes you bewitch yourself by your decision. Even in decision, they said something. Uh, an old man told us something. He said there are some thing, three things that you cannot tell a man not to do. One, you cannot tell a man not to marry that, can, that woman. Because if he marries the woman later on and they talk about it, you will not enter the house again. <laughs> Second thing, he said you cannot tell a man not to build their house. Because if he eventually build their house, how will you enter? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. At every crossroad in life, you need to make a decision. Your decision is what makes you who you are. Elijah told the Israelites, you are one spot in your life. Why? Because you have decided to not to make up your mind on who you want to serve. So why are you between two opinions? If God is God and if you want to serve God, serve him. If it's Baal, that means the Israelites were indecisive. They were at a junction, a crossroad, where they are thinking, yeah, I mean, uh, our forefathers serve God. Uh, um, now the latest thing in town is the Baal. Hallelujah. 
sometimes some of the things that affect our decision is when we follow what we called the trend. Trend. I'm not saying trends are no good, but how well do you trust the trend? How well? Let's pick one of the trend things. Fashion. Fashion is what is good. Is fashion not good? But if it's driven to the extreme, becomes something else. Hallelujah. If fashion is driven to the extreme, it becomes something else. That's why I, I got a quote a long time. He said, how do you differentiate between a fashion crazy lady and a prostitute? There's a thin line between them. Because the fashion crazy want to be all exposing. Show the, the curves, show the cleavage, show the, the mountains and the valley. After you have shown everything, Somebody will come and pay the price. The bride price, have you? What is left for the man? Huh? Johnny already knows how the thing look like. Uh, Mustafa knows how. Everybody knows how. What is left? Praise the Lord. And, you know, everything is all about mindset. Sometimes you believe, ladies believe that I must show them. You don't need to show them. Because they already know you. Just be you. I told a friend, I said... That my friend, you call him designer, designer. Because even to his bathroom slippers, he's a designer. So sometimes when I go to his house, when I pick his uh, sunshade, I will say, which one is this? He will say, look at the side. It's Ray Bams. So, and God gave me a word for him one day. And I told him, after chasing all these designers, who are you? Because we cannot label you now. You are Giorgio Armani at night. In the morning, you are... Balenciaga. <laughs> so God made me tell him one day, I said to him, I said, until you realize that you are the label, not the cloth. That's when everything about your mindset will change. What good does a label have if you don't wear it? Can we talk about a design on the shelf if it's not on, on somebody? So who makes the design popular? It's you. Remember, you are the label, not the cloth, not what you put on. Because even, there are some people, they will carry Louis Vuitton, everything, and they will look like Moshi. If, you, if they tell you that this is what they are wearing, you will tell them it's fake. Because they are, they are not carrying it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
So like I said, life presents to us a crossroad. And the decision that we make is what gives us a way. Elijah said something very profound. If you want to serve God, serve God. And this is the word that I'm bringing to you this morning. The crossroad of life that presents to you God and other options. God and other options. Now the question I ask you, you know, some of you, if you are asked tomorrow, if I ask any time, are you a Christian? You say you're a Christian. You, came, you all came to church this morning, yes. I'm sure you didn't come to church to look at just pastor, to look at anybody. You come to church because you hope, you trust in one person, one being, who is God, I mean, you have come to seek God's face, you have come to see, but why is it that Monday to Friday you seek other faces? Why? So you are like the person Elijah is talking to. If it's God, choose God. If it's other options, choose other options. I've said, I've said this several times. I have a friend. I, I finished from um, Ikeja Grammar School. I don't know how many people know that school. It's a no show there. A friend of mine, a colleague of mine, I mean, that we finished together then. Many years, I mean, 10 years after, I understand he was the one in charge of Osho, the garage. Do you know how much they make every day? The head of area boys. And I had to think between myself and think very well. I said, I'm choosing this God over because I know that guy. He's my G. He's <laughs> my personal G. If he has my number, he will call me, he will ask me to come. But I have to make up my mind. Do I want to serve this God or I want to be there on the other side? <laughs> oh, Shodi. That's where Uluomo came out from. MC Uluomo, Abi. You know, life presented those options for me. And I chose where I am today. I chose where I am today not because I want to pretend to you all. Because some people's Christianity is based on pretext. Some people's Christianity is based on the fact that you are born a Christian, so you must remain a Christian. Either by your will or not your will. Uncle, Uncle, Uncle Stephen must not see you somewhere else. Mama Charlie must not see you somewhere else. That's why you are here. You don't even know this God. You don't even trust this God. So you are on that crossroad that you must decide. Who? Why are you wasting your time in church? I'm telling you. You don't need to waste your time. That's what Paul, I mean, the Elijah was saying. Choose one. Choose one. If God is God, choose God. If God is not, if he's bad, choose bad. You know, I've got some friends in the past that, you know, when you tell them uh, about hellfire, they tell you that hellfire is more interesting. It has all the likes of Michael Jackson, an old fella, you know. It's going to, I mean, it's going to light up. And he's saying, please tell me, he was asking me, tell me the star, the artist in heaven. He said, heaven is going to be boring. He has made up his mind. At least he's better than some of you here. He chose something. <laughs> the worst thing you can do to yourself is to say you want to stay on the fence there is no department called on the fence hallelujah but I'm here today to tell you that 
if you choose God, a whole lot of benefits are there for you. First thing you must know that God, the reason why God deserves the criteria is because he's your creator. He deserves it. Sometimes you give something to somebody that, I mean, some, somebody who deserves something. I mean, God deserves us choosing him. Even though he is God, he is our creator, he never first forces you at all. He never placed any demands on you. He wants you to decide from yourself. Decide by yourself and say, I want God. Number two, the reason why you can choose God is because he is dependable. You can depend on him. He said something, he said, he is not in Joshua chapter 1 verse 5. He said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. He said, as I was with Moses, that context, that Bible passage is giving you a point of reference. In our own time now, you can say, as I was with Adeboe, I will be with you. As I was with Kumui, those who you can know that, yes, definitely God was with these people. God is saying to you, Joshua 1 5, as I was with them, I will be with you. Isaiah 43. Or oh, is this the sound engineer that decided to. <laughs> said, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. Number two, he said in Isaiah 43, verse 2, he said, if you pass through, that means it's a God that keeps to his word. He said, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. He said, the rivers will not overflow you. You know, I can remember those days when I sit here and listen to somebody preaching like this. And this verse is of scripture when they say it. I begin to reflect on the fact that, you know, then I don't know, I don't know, maybe I'm 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 still young. I won't say I'm old. Then back in secondary school. We used to attend um, this program, the um, lit. They call it literary. You know, in America, it's okay. <laughs> and when we go for lit, we try to get you know nice clothes, nice canvas, you know. But you cannot be sure that you go home with that canvas because area boys come, people talks that. I mean, it's a secondary school thing. It's like what they call the prom. So we're not sure if you wear a chain, definitely. So we tell ourselves, you don't, you don't know any guys that will just keep your chain, keep your jewelries, and just... But some of will come, because that day they must break both. Something must happen. So, I used to know some gangs then that, you know, they assured me that nothing, nothing. So, I wore a new canvas, new chain, nice white t-shirt, you know, jeans. And I went there, went to lead with toast girls, you know, just, you know, <laughs> bouncing on the street after the program. And they emptied me. I look around for my guys. I didn't see them. So that thing happened on the Friday. You know, we go to it's, it's, it's always Friday. You know? And on Sunday I was in church and that man of God was preaching. God will take care of you. And I was just looking at the man that like is really. I was just robbed yesterday. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
But really, I am telling you, God will take care of you. Me, I was a function of what I went to do. But God will really take care of you. It's a God that you can trust. Why? Because he holds all powers in his hand. He holds what? That's the reason why Elijah was so confident. When Elijah got to Ahab, Ahab asked him, his first of all said, you, you have come, you that troubled Israel. He said, I don't, I'm not troubling Israel. It's you that I'm troubling, you and your people. And Elijah gave a command because he knew that God will back him up. He knew that God will always back him up. How much of God do you know today that you know that when you go anywhere, you can command this God to back you up? That's what I'm saying. Decide today who you want to follow. Is it God? Or other options? Some of us have other options in a way that we are too comfortable with those other options and we do not even recognize even God's influence in our lives. Praise the Lord. The only example that came in my head is this. Most times, when people come to me for something, I direct them back to God. I say, go and pray to God. And I know a guy that told me, he said, I know you can give me. And because he was saying that, I was angry. I refused to give him. You know why? Because the person is putting me in danger of God. Who can do all things? Not me. God can bless me to bless some more people. But if God, if that person is beginning to idolize me, that's off. Because I will never take the place of God. People are like that. When they begin to focus on you and say, I know you can do this thing. No. It is God who enables me to do whatever I do. Praise the Lord. And that's why people, because you believe so, so, so much in man, that's why you, 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 you change the course of your life. Especially ladies. You put trust in a man that has money. Even though he's married, you don't care. As long as the money keeps coming in and the guy is so generous and some of you will come and do testimony with yourself. God help us. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You need to choose God today. Other options do not last. Deuteronomy 18 let me, let me be sure. 818. Deuteronomy chapter 818. It said, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. That man that you think that has the money that is rolling in, by the time God shut that door for him, I don't know whether you change another man. I say, of course they will change. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is the good option because he keeps to his promises. Psalm 37 verse 25. Psalm 37 verse 25. It says, I have been young and now I am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaking nor his seed begging 
bread. I've had people, I've, I mean, this message is not new to me because I've spoken to a lot of people concerning this God option. And what they tell me, they tell me that, Pastor, you don't understand. Sometimes all these things doesn't work the way you say it. And I've been trying to wrap my head around why they are saying like that. And I'm sure some of you will agree with what I'm saying, Abby. Uh-huh. It says, Pastor, this thing doesn't work the way you say it. Because sometimes we ask God and God, it seems that God favors some people than Abby? Uh-huh. I'm, I'm getting a response. It seems that God favors some people than other people. It seems that sometimes when we ask, God is not listening. But when others ask, Have you seen a case whereby sometimes you you preempt something and it happened? Has it happened before? If it has happened to you, let me see your hand. Uh So do you, have you ever preempt good things happen to you? Have you ever preempted that this thing that I'm saying to God, God will listen to me? So why, why are we in doubt that God answers some people and don't answer some people. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Also, God deserves this credibility because he's all powerful. Psalm, 2 Samuel chapter 22. Say, who is God? Save the Lord. Who is a rock? Save our God. God is my strength and my power, and he maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like in his feet, and set me upon my high places. He teaches my, teach my hands to war, and so that a bow of steel is broken by my hands. God is powerful, and he can make you as powerful as it is. I've always said that the, the thing that happened between Elijah and the prophet of Baal was not initiated by God was not initiated. God did not tell Elijah, go and face the prophet of God. Did he? It was Elijah that initiated it by himself. That this is what I want to do. And the Bible says in James, it said, Elijah is a man like horse. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm not saying there are not other options. But those other options, are they the right options for us? Are they the options that will make us who God wants us to be? Because Babalawo is the option, you know? Why are you not patronizing them? Huh? You don't have money. There is somebody that is a native doctor that is doing ritual for money. Can you? Are you interested? <laughs> so why are you not patronizing that one? Hallelujah. Because you think that is to the extreme, have you? But even trusting a man is to the extreme. God says that, you know, uh, it was Paul that said it. He said, we get to a point that we believe in the creature more than the creator. Who is the creature? We are his creature. But when we put our trust in man, then we are living God. Who is the creator? And trusting in man, who is the creature? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, what are the solutions to all these things? We need to make up our mind and decide. But I have a promise for you. The day you decide to choose God, God will be there for you. God will never leave nor forsake you. He will fulfill everything that he has for you. But he requires you to do what um, Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 says. Proverbs 3 verse 5 is a simple, 
Simple passage. He said, trust in the Lord with what? All that I have. And lean not on your own understanding. That's the last thing I'm going to explain before we close. Praise the Lord. So how do we lean on our understanding? I was listening, I was watching a BET program um, over the weekend and they were interviewing one man, a man of God, um, that man that sang this song. I give myself away. What's that? What's his name again? William McDowell. Thank you. And he said that the reason sometimes why we fail to meet that age with God is because we allow our consciousness and we to dictate our discussion with God. And he mentioned something very profound which I'm going to say to you today. Until you get to that point with God that you lose consciousness of your thoughts with God. You know when you talk to man, as you are talking, your brain is working. Your brain never stops. Abby? The man is, you are telling the man that, look, I need this. And he's giving you an excuse. Your brain is calculating what next to say. <laughs> now, the man of God says something. He said, until you get to that point where you suspend your thinking, I just come to God. God, I have come. This is me. Do whatever you want to do. And you don't think about anything. That's the reason why, you know, for children, the Bible says that the children will, I mean, let your faith be like the children, Abby. Why? Because even when comes, look, my, my son, eh, if I'm broke, he doesn't care. He doesn't even know. Do you understand? But he will bring his bill and drop it. They say we should pay tomorrow. I'll go. <laughs> if I eventually bring the receipt of payment and say I have paid, he doesn't know whether I went to borrow the money. He does not even want to bother his head. That's why it is. Also, the second scenario. The faith that God wants us to have like a child again. That somebody is bragging outside and he's saying, my father will beat you. My daddy will oh, my daddy will buy all this place. He doesn't know that they just sack his daddy. And he doesn't want to know. But what he knows is this. My daddy will buy this whole place. God wants you to come to him believing that he can do all things. Not you believing that he will do all things and uh, Shola Bobo is going to transfer something. I will release a prayer. I say, by this time tomorrow, you will receive a lot. And you say, Amen. And right now, we have not finished. You are texting him. God has said, We will receive a lot. Too. Is it from you? You have missed it already. You can't help God to choose who He is going to use. You cannot help God in any way. Praise the Lord. So, the question is, who do you prefer to choose? And if you prefer to choose God, are you willing to surrender your whole heart to Him? Are you willing to, like the marriage covenant, are you willing to forsake all other options? I can hear yes over there, oh. I can hear yes, dear. Oh. The rest are still thinking, you know. If you are still, I can give you time to think about it too. 
If you know you're willing to trust God and God only, you will rise up on your feet right now.